Quanto? It's live. Yeah. Hello, everybody. How is everybody today? This we have another week of graduate power. This is Dean Morote from, from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. And as you see, I enjoy the sun already. You see, we are, the spring is coming. So we are so excited today. We, learned, we will learn today about the advanced certificate in forensic accounting. And we have here, or distinguished faculty, Dr. David Shapiro. We have all alumni, Ariana Kalaj, who yes. will have a beautiful work, and she will tell us about that. And of course, our associate dean, Maria D'Agostino. Maria, tell us every, all about uh, Professor Shapiro and Ariana. We want to know. Good evening, everyone. I'm happy everyone is here um, joining our graduate power and learning about uh, forensic uh, accounting. So uh, Professor uh, David Shapiro, he has extensive uh, background, including working uh, as an FBI agent and assistant legal advisor, assistant county prosecutor and corporate investigator. Uh, he serves as the coordinator of the fraud examination and financial forensics program at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, um, instructing in the fields of fraud risk assessment and investigation and oversight. Um, he wrote a special chapter for the book, How They Got Away With It, White Collar Criminals and the Financial Meltdown. He's also authored books on accounting information systems and organized crime. And he has an article to be published in June by um, Oxford University Press on hedge funds. So thanks, uh, Professor David Shapiro, for being with us uh, this evening. Ariana Kala, uh, she holds a master's degree in criminal justice in fraud examination and financial forensics and a master's degree in public administration in inspection and oversight with an advanced certificate in forensic accounting from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. That's a lot of degrees. Yes. Uh, she currently, uh, she works as an auditor at the office of the New York City Comptroller. Um, educational knowledge and professional experience have allowed her to become a certified fraud examiner and pursue certification in public accounting. Her interests are to investigate and diminish the effects of white collar crime on businesses, organizations, and communities. So welcome this evening with us. I'm glad Thank that you, you were able to make uh, Thank you very much. I'm so excited about uh, the, hearing more about the white collar. I, I'm pretty sure people will start sending me questions right now. <laughs> uh, you know why we all watch TV, we all watch mm -hmm. those shows that we have the white colors and the uh -huh. stories. So it will be very interesting to learn more about you guys. Yeah. Maria? So, so, why don't, so why don't we start um, with uh, Professor Shapiro. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself um, and your journey that has led you here um, teaching in the advanced uh, certificate uh, program in forensic accounting? Certainly. Uh, it's been a long trip to get here, but worth it. You know, back in my time, we didn't have this kind of program. Uh, we, I learned the hard way, grow up learning accounting, learning law, working in the field, making one's mistakes. So I worked in the bureau as a prosecutor. I, I was really interested in hiding money, you know, dirty money. It always intrigued me because it seemed global. And uh, with this program, hopefully students can get shortcuts and not have to make as many mistakes as I did. So, so what were some of those mistakes you made? <laughs> so maybe in terms of if you were to get right. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll be happy to, uh -huh. to, to uh -huh. admit my mistakes. And I, I only wish I could just use that in the past tense, but undoubtedly, <laughs> you know. Anyway, with that, it, it, it takes a bit of, of trial and error to do this job right. Because when you go into a situation highly dependent on data and documentation, data and documentation that aren't prepared by you, you have to trust often in the client 
and the client is paying the dollar and the client may not be as honest as you hope. The records may not be there. Adversaries may not be as honest and, and forthcoming as you would hope. So it's a lot of, of going down roads that if you had perfect knowledge, you wouldn't have to go down. So one wastes time a bit. One trusts the wrong people a bit. But you know what? That, that's part of life. And, and unfortunately or fortunately, that's the best way to grow, too. So as it is the next question. And before I turn, uh, ask my question to Ariana, if you could tell us a little bit how the advanced certificate program is designed. So it does give shortcuts to students, as you mentioned, and they don't have to go about it um, the long route. In other words, they wouldn't first have to be an FBI investigator. But, um, so if you could tell us a little bit more about the advanced certificate and how that helps students. Um, of course, yeah, ideally the student comes in already with a significant background in accounting and general business. So that when the student takes the advanced accounting, the analytical accounting, and analytical auditing, analytical methods at the graduate level, the student can leverage his or her undergraduate experience in accounting and business so that he or she is better prepared to enter the workforce. You know, there's no need to make those youthful mistakes uh, that, that one in my position would have made. Thank you, uh, Professor Shapiro. So Ariana. <laughs> yes. So tell us a little bit about um, your current position, and then if you could also speak about um, how well, how um, the certificate program helped you to get to where you are. Okay, yes. Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, I work as an auditor at the office of the New York City Comptroller. Um, basically, we conduct financial and performance audits of the New York City agencies private entities that have contract with the city and programs that are funded by the city. We look at their internal controls, procedures, and determine whether they are complying with the rules and regulations set forth by that particular agency or New York City Charter. In addition, as auditors, we also look for occurrence and potential for fraud. And based on our assessment of the audit, we provide recommendations. And to answer the, the next question was about how the certificate has helped me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the certificate, it has opened a lot of opportunities for me because of the certificate I was able to, uh, because when I first started the journey, it was uh, very difficult to find jobs, to find opportunities in our field because it was a brand new field when I started. Uh, and, uh, at first, when I, I applied at the, for an internship because I couldn't find uh, job opportunities, I was like, okay, I need to find an internship to kind of give me some experience. And uh, I found the internship at the department, um, at the Department of Investigation. I did one internship there, which uh, I feel like it opened a lot of opportunities because of that opportunity I had, it led me to the job I'm currently now. And the knowledge that I obtained when I went you know, to school at John Jay with uh, the certificate in forensic accounting, it made it easier for me to actually do my job at my internship. Because in this field, you not only learn the, the world of accounting, but you also learn actually how to do, how to understand more different types of frauds and how people can commit frauds, what are the schemes they usually do. And having a background in it, it actually helps you better perform your work. And um, I also was able to do another internship at uh, the New York City DA's office in the forensic accounting department. And uh, most of the investigators were actually fascinated that there actually was such a field because they had never heard of it before. And, um, and everywhere I go when I meet professionals in my field, every time I tell them I have a background in forensic accounting and actually I have a degree, undergrad degree, and also a certificate, they actually are amazed because it's, again, as I stated early, it, it not only teaches you the accounting aspect of it, but it also teaches you the fraud aspect of it, which is great. 
So you see both sides of it together. So when you were in the MBA, in what moment you say, hmm, I want to study forensic accounting? That was, that's, that's very interesting. Yes. So actually it started before that for me. Uh, once uh, I received my degree in criminal justice, the last semester I was there, I heard of, uh, it, it was 2015 and this uh, program just uh, was going to start in the fall of 2015. So I heard about this degree and I was so fascinated by its title that I really wanted to learn more about it. So I enrolled back in school and I got my degree in fraud examination and financial forensics. And I loved every class. I love this field. I knew this field, the moment I heard it, I knew it was meant uh, to be my career path. So that is when I realized this is what I wanted to do. And obtaining that degree and also getting my master's at John Jay with a certificate in forensic accounting has helped me obtain my certificate in, in becoming a certified fraud examiner and also pursue my CPA. Currently, I am pursuing my CPA. I'm halfway done. So, wow, you, you, yeah. have, you will be, you will be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. you. That is the goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what I would urge the students because forensic accounting, I know this is a bias because that's the way I feel. I feel it's such a beautiful field and it's very intriguing. Um, I would urge them to if you follow this path to obtain a certificate in, for in, uh, in uh, forensic accounting, to obtain, a, to become certified product examiners, and if they want to also CPAs. And if they obtain their master's degree at John Jay, for sure they will be able to actually pursue the, their CPA because they will have all the necessary credits. That's, that's, that's... Now, Professor Chapiro, how did you decide to to go to this road as well, the road about fraud investigation. And for, how do you, what do you become fascinated for this topic? Well, it's challenging and each, each case is a little different. So ordinarily accountants will work as auditors and have a very routinized year. You know, the fall will be the season to prep for the audit. The winter will be the season to prep for the tax returns. Forensic accounting, every case is kind of sort of unique. So it's, it's a good way to live. I mean, as, as Ariana had mentioned, you know, forensic accountants at best search for truth and justice, not just to support management, but to find out what the records show, what the testimonies show. And it's that, that idea that you can actually look at books and records you know, in, in the privacy of your office, if you will, and yet do something good, you know, maybe straighten out the books, maybe, maybe uh, return some, excuse me, somebody to a position that they should have had. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it's good. It's good and it's challenging. That's great. Thanks, Professor Shapiro. Could you talk a little bit more also about um, the professors that teach uh, in, in the program? Um, you know, their qualifications, what they add, their uniqueness. Of course, there are four primary professors, at least in the forensic accounting specialization, which is not to take away anything from all of the other professors that teach in the MPA inspection and oversight and public policy administration fields. What we have, we have one full-timer, Patrice Chiano, who comes to us with oodles of experience as a forensic accountant for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. She's also worked in the private capacity at large banks and consulting firms. Uh, she's got a lot of stories, she's got a lot of smarts, and she's liked, you know, and that's important. She communicates well. And we have three adjuncts who are highly professional also. Uh, Fred Gerkins, who has probably more initials after his name uh, than are contained in the alphabet. Uh, Irama Pozo, who is one of the most creative, thoughtful, professionally minded uh, adjuncts we have. And uh, Linda La Barbera, who made a name for herself at the undergraduate level, but now is moving up to teach graduates also. Thanks. Uh, 
David. Ariana, Adi what would be, I mean, you talked about internships, but what else uh, would be one of your biggest takeaways from um, getting the certificate that you would share with other students? Um, well, is the security that I can advance farther in my career without worrying about whether I have the qualifications or not. Also, it helps uh, like receiving a master's degree, especially with specialization, it helps one specialize in the field of choice. It opens more opportunities. And of course, it gives you a higher pay grade, which is always a plus. <laughs> which of is course always a plus. <laughs> So um, I have a question of this, of the audience. They're asking Ariana, uh, where is you, you began the internships during the program? Yes, during the program. So and I would, yeah. After the internship, you got the job in the same place or in different place? A different place. Actually, when I was doing my internship at DOI, they, I was going to go for a second term, but because I uh, was offered this job opportunity at controller's office, I took it. But um, I've, uh, as I've seen with uh, my colleagues from school and stories that I've heard at DOI, if you do a good job and they like you, they will hire you. That's what I've seen, I've heard. So I would urge students um, to try to get an internship at DOI. It's a great opportunity and they will learn so much because there you get constantly different cases. You don't do just one thing. You just don't get one particular case. Like Professor Shapiro mentioned, when it comes to accounting, you know, forensic accounting, it's not like you do the same thing over and over again. It's always a different case. Constantly you have to, in a way, re like uh, train your mind to kind of think differently constantly, not just do the, the things the same way because you never know how the fraud were perpetrated. So that's what you're trying to figure out how the perpetrator committed the fraud. So, yeah. Uh, on a similar kind of question, Professor Shapiro, what, do you, what activities do you think are most beneficial for the students? I mean, there's internships, there's capstones, you know, there's research projects you know, with faculty. Um, what, what do you think um, amongst these or others are most um, valuable for uh, students in, that are pursuing the certificate in forensic accounting? Well, in this sense, forensic accounting is not different from a, a lot of other disciplines. The, the best thing one can have maybe is an internship. There's nothing like working with other people in the field, that community of practice that's developed. But you know what? Not everyone can get an internship. You know, not everyone does. So it, 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 all is not lost. What students should take advantage of more than anything is that which gets them to write more and research more because it makes the mind alive. And there's no shortage, as you could, as you could attest to, Maria, of, of faculty that would love to have research assistants and love to have somebody interested in a particular discipline. So I would say those are the two primary avenues. One, one, if you're lucky, right? Like Ariana and skilled as she is, but you know what? If you're not that lucky and times are tight, you know, take advantage of all the wonderful professors that teach. Yes. I agree with that. I, and I, what I want to add to what Professor Shapiro said is that, um, when I first started, I didn't know, I wasn't sure about what jobs to apply to. And professors at John Jay really gave me great advice and really veered me in the right direction to obtain the opportunities that were available for me. So I would urge students to constantly, if you are unsure about something, ask your professors. They will give you some, some kind of idea, some kind of help where it kind of, which would help you basically find either find more opportunities or answers the questions that you have. That's a great piece of advice. Thank you. Thank you. And, and so, it, uh, David, another question, um, you know, Ariana works for the controller's office, but where else do students uh, that complete their advanced certificate, where else, where do they end up working typically? 
a little a variety of places. Uh, there's the government, and the government meaning city government, state government, federal government, whether in an auditing capacity, an investigative capacity, an evaluative assurance services capacity. Also, there's availability in the nonprofit sector. Nonprofits are indeed in need of a lot of accounting type support due to the uh, struggles that nonprofits have with respect to budgets. Often they don't have the most uh, efficient and effective accounting systems in place. So a forensic accountant can find good work to do at nonprofits. And of course, there's the private sector, whether it's in loss control, risk management, uh, consulting, there are a lot of opportunities there. And, and I think the big four accounting firms are among the largest employers in the world. And certainly there's work there to be done. So the students want to, sorry, the audience want to know uh, if you have any famous case, uh, case that you want to mention, maybe Ariana or Professor Chafiro, they want to know, is there any famous cases? Uh, I cannot discuss. You because, cannot discuss. Uh, <laughs> it's too famous to my, discuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we cannot discuss our audits until they are released. So Unless it's in the TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about you, Professor Chafiro? Well, I have two that come to mind. One is very complex and global, involving uh, tax shelters and laundering money through the Philippines and the use of investment advisors in Newport and uh, big uh, four accounting specialists. And as challenging as that was and as successful as that was, there is one particular case that always I shake my head about because sometimes, sometimes it's right in front of you, right? As a forensic accountant, sometimes we have a tendency to jump into the books and records, you know, show me the, show me the writings, show me the general ledger, show me the, uh, the invoices. Well, we were doing that. And, you know, it takes a lot of time to go through books, records, and supporting documentation. So we weren't getting anywhere. All right? So after four or five days on the job, I'm headed to the men's room, and I pass uh, an employee of the client. She passes me by, and she says to me, look at the ABC company, and then goes into the bathroom, and I go into the, it was like something out of deep throat, because it was like, you know, so, okay, so we, we pull up the ABC company, turns out the ABC company is, is, is really a shell of an employee there. One thing leads to another, and the crazy thing was the CEO of the company couldn't give raises properly. There were budgets, there were constraints, but he said, well, you know what, if you bill me through a fictitious company, I will approve it because I have room in the budget for supplies and other related items. So, you know, it was, it was, I know it's, it's, it didn't take a stroke of genius on my part. It took a little luck. It took, it took being someone that you'd be willing to talk to and having those soft people skills cannot be uh, uh, underestimated. It's very important that, that uh, I'm sorry, it cannot be overestimated. You, you need to be able not just to look at books and records, but to be able to talk to people. That's important too. That's, that's very important. In graduate studies, we have a lot of courses and workshops about soft skills because those soft skills sometimes are the ones who open the door for you in several of the cases. And, and that's very, uh, that's, we are very aware of that. Maria, you have some ex more questions? Yes, I have some. Yeah. <laughs> so I have- Mar well, Maria is thinking about those skills. <laughs> Well, I was thinking about th those skills and those are skills that you, you could probably learn through the internships and working with faculty and kind yeah. of interacting. But I have, um, before we go to almost the last question, I was just curious, Ariana, the, um, what, you're in the controller's office, right? Uh, you're auditing right now, but where do you see yourself in five years? Um, well, getting my, first of all, my CPA, because that's like uh, my number one goal right now. Um, and hopefully I see myself as uh, having a forensic accountant title. Yeah. That Better is my ultimate proud goal. you, Ariana. I see you will be far away than that. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much. Yeah. I agree. I agree. So, Ariana, if you were to give 
Um, one piece of advice to a student that was starting the certificate um, in the forensic accounting, what would it be? I would uh, say that I know sometimes it might get challenging. It might be challenging. Um, and even sometimes it may be overwhelming. I just say be patient, focused, determinant, uh, and then you, you will get there before you know it. And also what I would say, uh, believe in your work. Even if you find it hard to find opportunities and believe me, it was not not easy for me to find, like I didn't find my internships one, two, three or easily. It took me, I was in school for a long time. It took me a while to find my internships. So I would say to students, don't give up on yourself, believe in yourself. If that is what you want to do, you will find yourself with that degree. That's great. To so be persistent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, how to exactly. be persistent. Thank you. And yes, you need to love, to love the topic. You need really to have passion yes. for, yes. for, you know, it, it's a hard because you need to be, or I see detail oriented because I can imagine checking every detail of movement that people does. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ariana. You're very welcome. So, Thank you. So, Professor Shapiro, a similar question. If you were to give a piece of advice um, to students who are thinking of starting their certificate, um, what would it be? Don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone, please. If you stay in your comfort zone, you will not learn anything new that's really important. Don't be afraid to, to, to take upon challenges. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid of, of, of these kinds of things. You can, we can't grow otherwise. And I think the students that straight jacket themselves into, you know, I need to get an A here. So let me just schmooze the professor as well as I can. Not that that necessarily works. It might have the opposite effect. But, you know, the focus should be more on learning, not getting the grade you want, but learning and be the kind of person that shows other people that he or she can and is willing to learn. And that advice is for any of our students, really, because sometimes when the students see challenge or they see oh, this course is too much work, but it will pass. It will pass and you will get your degree, you will get to advance certificate, and then you will be happy working. And then you want to study more like Ariana. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it will be, uh, so I, I have one student more asking, one person asking a question regarding Ariana. What, how suddenly you decided to go for the CPA? Uh, I, I always wanted to get my CPA because Again, I want to be able to advance farther in my career. And I feel like once you have your CFE CPA, you are set. So that's why I decided to get my CPA. To basically have more opportunities. Thank you. Yeah. So Maria. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you, um, David, Ariana, for joining us here this evening. Um, all the viewers and the questions that were asked. Thank you so much uh, for a great conversation about um, the advanced uh, forensic accounting uh, certificate. And we hope to see you next time. Thank, thank you very so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.